Hi, everybody. Oops. Hi, it's Dr. Linda of the Vascular Birthmarks Foundation. Welcome to our Facebook Live session with world-renowned expert, Dr. Milton Weiner. Send us a little note so that we know we're live and we can see you. We see the uh, counter up at the top, so it appears that we're working. Oh, hi, Aaron. Aaron just joined us. Hi, Aaron. Thank you for joining us. Where are you joining us from, Aaron? And hi, uh, Kathy and Scott. Uh, welcome. Um, we're ready to start taking your questions, and Dr. Weiner is here. Uh, hi, Marissa. Thank you for joining us. So, um, it's it's uh, so that you're um, hi, hello, everybody. They're coming through quickly. So, Indianapolis, hello. Let's get your questions started. We only have one hour, so um, let's get your questions started for Dr. Weiner. Remember any questions on hemangiomas or vascular birth, any vascular birthmark type. Also, our conference is on Saturday, October 6th at the Lenox Hospital, where you'll have free clinic uh, session with Dr. Weiner and other experts. Hi, WatchTech from Poland. Happy to see you. <laughs> so let's um, have your questions for Dr. Weiner. Go ahead, you can start submitting your questions. And I'm going to log on on my phone in case they're, I'm not seeing them. Let me just see, because sometimes uh, it takes a while for the question. Oh, here we go. And let me just see. Okay. Oh, we have seven comments. Hi, Kathy. Okay. So I'm showing it on here just to make sure we're not losing anything. Hi, Kathy. Let's get your question started. Um, so again, our conference is uh, Saturday, October 6th at the Lenox Hill Hospital. The first 50 people who register outside of the area will get a free hotel room, free conference admission for everyone, and a free clinic appointment with experts like Dr. Weiner. Um, just waiting to see your questions. Oh, hi from Sydney, Australia. Hello, Ruby. How are you? Um, so we're not seeing questions. We're seeing you say hello. <laughs> So, I mean, it's only uh, two minutes in, but start typing your questions for Dr. Weiner. Okay. So it's popping up on here too. This has enabled me to see it on here in case I'm missing any. Here we go. Last one we have, Jolene just joined us. Hi, Jolene. Uh, post your questions, please, for Dr. Weiner. We can see that you're on. We're just not seeing any questions. Dean and Knight, we can see that you're on. So let's see some questions come through. Um, okay. Hello, Jolene. <laughs> questions for Dr. Weiner? I know you're all saying hi, but we only have uh, 57 minutes left. So <laughs> let's get your questions coming through. So, um, hi from sunny Ohio. Okay. I hope it's more sunny than New York at the moment. <laughs> um, when is Dr. Weiner going to Berlin? Good question. So next trip to Berlin is in about two weeks time. Um, I'll be there. I think it's March 13, 14, something around there. And, uh, we do have a full clinic, but if, uh, somebody wants to see me in Berlin, I can, they should email me or email Linda and I can quite easily set it up because I'm going to be there about four or five days. Yeah, so Wojtek, email me at birthmark.org backslash Dr. Linda, and then I'll put you in touch with Dr. Weiner or Dr. O, who are both beyond that trip, so that whether it's formally or informally, somebody can see you. So is there a cut age for laser treatment? Laser treatment of what? This is a... Port wine stain that she has of the face. Oh, okay. So meaning cut age mean cut early, off, a cut a off. Cut off. No, there's never a cut off age. In fact, we typically can treat any time. Uh, Roy Geronimus says as soon as the child's born, we can start treating. And we know that the first treatment is probably the most important treatment. So very important to get early treatment going and you can continue treating forever and ever and ever. So Lavonne is writing to us, and she wants to know if you ever deal with a lip reduction. Yeah, absolutely. We, I do a lot. And in fact, um, I hate to say it, but one or two of the operations were operations that I developed on lip reduction. So 
I've done lots and lots and lots of lip reductions. Very happy to, to help anyone. Anna Howard says her 10-month-old daughter is having an MRI of a vascular malformation of her mouth and tongue. She will be getting laser done on her tongue at the same time. Any pointers? Oh, okay. So laser treatment of the tongue is very important for venous malformations or for lymphatic malformations. We typically have stopped doing uh, laser treatment of the tongue for lymphatic malformations because we uh, have found that bleomycin is much more effective. However, we definitely use uh, uh, laser treatment for venous malformations of the tongue. And as long as the person knows what he or she is doing, we're, you know, it, it should go well. But we do not do CO2 laser treatment for lymphatic malformations of the tongue. Okay, so Marissa, we're getting a lot of questions now. She says that what are the average amount of treatments, but I'm not sure. She says Dr. O is doing number five on her daughter. I'm assuming that might be a laser, but I don't know. Okay, so the average number of treatments for laser treatment is about six to eight. So six to eight, some patients get 10 treatments, some will get fewer. Um, yeah, there's some um, So Kelly's saying, um, when do hemangiomas start to appear or stop showing up, and do you adjust for age? Okay, so we do adjust for age, but hemangiomas typically uh, within the first six to eight weeks of life should have shown up. Occasionally, a very deep hemangioma that was definitely present will show up later, but six to eight weeks... I'd say by 12 weeks, if it's not there, it's not a hemangioma. Um, what are Dr. Weiner's thoughts on the use of serolimus in conjunction with the PDL? That's from Dina. Serolimus in serolimus. conjunction. Yeah, we definitely use serolimus. Uh, serolimus is a very, very important drug, and we can do it. But in conjunction with a pulse dye laser for port wine stains, I really I don't have much experience in that, so I can't comment. On, on the two. But we use, actually, no, we, uh, I have to take that back. We use topical rapamycin. So we do use topical rapamycin for certain resistant port wine stains, and it works very, very nicely. Um, so Livono Levon, said, thank you. They're going to Cleveland Clinic for a second opinion. They were told that nothing could be done. So I guess now you're saying there can, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Dina said it, she was talking about uh, topical Marissa was talking about a port wine stain, okay. Um, Shireen wants to know, what age have you started doing bleomycin treatment? Okay, so once again, we do bleomycin fairly early. I wouldn't do bleomycin under three months of age. Uh, we do use bleomycin very successfully for lymphatic malformations, and it works very, very nicely. But once again, you've got to you've got to tailor the dose to the age of the patient and one has to be very careful in not overdosing. We don't know the precise dose symmetry for young infants. We know the lifetime total dose shouldn't be more than a certain amount, but uh, we're very cautious. So Erin says she has a daughter with a V1, V2 port wine on the left side. She is five and has been getting treatments with PDL since six weeks. She had almost cleared completely on the forehead and on the side of her face, but the center of her face has only had about 25%. We're thinking about going to yearly. I'm just, I just was wanting to see some more clearance in the middle, but we know that that's yeah, the most so the resistant. the middle of the face, the skin is very thick, and we don't know exactly why, but we do know that port wine stains in the middle of the face, especially the middle of the cheek, uh, tend to be very resistant. And after so many laser treatments, you've probably got maximum clearance, and it's probably fine to go to yearly or two yearly treatments. Uh, Gabriella, hello. Um, for, hello in Mexico. Um, so she was going to see Dr. Nelson for treatment, but he suggested a consult with you. Sure. You know we have our conference on October 6th in New York City, and you can get a free consult with Dr. Weiner sit in on his lectures, and also Dr. Nelson will be here. So that's an option for you, Gabriella, um, if you want. But you can also write to Dr. Wainer directly at birthmark.org backslash Wainer. Um, Mary said, thank you for your uh, help with removing the 
um, sinus Perry Kearney for her daughter. Sinus Perry Kearney. That, yeah, yeah, you've given their, them peace. Kathy says she has a raised hemangioma, or her child does, on the top of the head. What treatment would you recommend? I guess it depends on the size. Uh, yeah, it depends on the size. <clears throat> if it's a raised hemangioma, it depends on the age of the patient. Um, you know, we yeah, can she use... says the growth is rapid. No, I would definitely start uh, propranolol if, it's, if that's the case. Definitely. Uh, Drew Bowes says hi. Hi, Drew. It's good to see you. I see Corinne there. Hi, yeah. Corinne. And Missy is watching as well. Yeah, uh, Marissa says, what does maintenance for a port wine stain typically look like? Okay, so typically we treat until we get maximum clearance. And then once we get maximum clearance, we then go on to maintenance treatment. So maintenance treatment can be every year, every two years, every three years. And I have one patient that comes in every five years for a touch-up. All you do with maintenance is you do a touch-up treatment to get them back to where they were. Um, so Gabriella again is chiming in because her son is five and she wanted to know about, um, do you do hypertrophic surgery on the lip? Yes, okay. and very And she much says, so. yeah. Um, yeah. will that help to avoid overgrowth? Okay, so overgrowth is, we know that some patients get overgrowth. We don't know exactly why, but we do know that the signal to stop growing or to slow down in growth is seems to be absent in some patients so the lip just keeps on growing or the cheek or whatever anatomical area it is and um, we do do surgery to make the child look normal again unfortunately this does not stop the process the area continues to grow so we may have to revise it every few years now you may say well why do surgery in the first place if, if uh, it doesn't help it completely or it doesn't cure it? Well, at least it improves quality of life for the patient. They look normal, they function normally, and uh, we can keep them normal for a prolonged period of time. So it is very, very helpful. And subsequent treatments or subsequent surgeries are never as much as the initial surgery. So um, Molly said, she's a uh, Molly Birkenhauer Brodus wanted to thank you. You looked at her sure. daughter, Haley's MRI, communicated with her doctors in Cincinnati, and she's going to have surgery on Friday. Oh, good luck. Yeah, and, I remember this. And Drew case. said thank yeah. you as well. Yeah. Um, uh, Janine is coming from the UK. She has a facial port wine, left temple, and crosses corner of eyelid. She's never had any treatment. She's 56. Should she be concerned? Will it change as she gets older, and can it affect her eyesight? Okay, so if it hasn't affected your eyesight up until now, it's not likely to. Um, but you still may continue or you still may get treatments. Unfortunately, the port wine stain is going to continue to thicken or get darker. So, and, and this happens especially with advancing age as your skin softens and, and uh, begins to get thinner, you're more likely to experience these changes. So. Uh, some patients come for the first time at 50 or 55 for laser treatment. That's fine. Um, so Michaela has a good question. She had surgical removal of a lymphatic malformation and had partial tongue removal. She wants to know what type of specialist she should see because of random flare-ups. Her last surgery was 15 years ago by a plastic surgeon. PCP and I are stuck. Okay, okay. so... Uh, for random flare-ups, we typically do not do surgery. We do bleomycin injections. You should either see an ear, nose, and throat doctor or an interventional radiologist. And not somebody who does alcohol because we do not do alcohol injections. And as I said earlier, laser treatment is something of the past. So we typically just do bleomycin injections. Um, so, um, Kristen Wall wanted to thank you for taking care of her daughter. She said she's now 22. Um, Jolene said her daughter's 14, KTS mild, port wine on leg, foot, genitalia, getting laser with doctor every three to four months, continues to have pain and swelling. Um, MRI, Doppler negative, no clearance really on thigh, calf, and foot. Is this expected? Well, you know, some patients respond, others don't. And, uh, you know, it depends on the thickness and the type of lesion. 
and is this uh, is it uh, KTS? Yes, KTS. Yeah. yeah, so some KTS stains do not respond. Um, and it's I mean, not even, unusual. Yeah, yeah, and isn't it a fact too that the scholars think that the KTS stain might not even be a true port wine stain? Oh, correct. And well, maybe it's not. That's yeah, why, yes. it's not. It's a combined lymphatic capillary stain. venous stain. So. You know, it's it's different from a port wine stain, so it may not respond, and so that's not unusual. Uh, Rebecca says she saw you on Body Bazaar and thought it was great. Whose body was bizarre? Some... Mine. Or... <laughs> so, I'm sorry. It's some show. <laughs> okay, I don't want to know. No details. No, no, it's uh, it's, uh, it's a medical. Problem. I know. I understand. Yeah. Um, Molly wants to know: Do laser treatments for port wine stains cause any hair loss? And that's a very good question. Okay, so that's a good question. Yes. We have seen patients who have had uh, many laser treatments, and in hair bearing areas, the amount of hair growth in that area is diminished. So I have no doubt that multiple laser treatments can cause hair loss or diminished hair growth. And it stands to reason. Melanin is the pigment present in hair and uh, a laser treatment can cause um, uh, destruction of melanin and so if you destroy melanin, especially at the stem cells of the hair follicle or at the stem cells of the hair, you will affect hair growth. So the answer is yes. Um, Teresa, guten Abend. She's writing to us guten from Abend. the guten Abend. And she's excited to listen to this. She said, thank you for both of what you're doing for patients and children. Your dedication to this affliction gives us hope and promise. Wish you both were practicing decades and decades ago when I was a youngster, bless you both. So we appreciate that. On Bruno, he said, Dr. Weiner, I appreciate you and your help over the phone last year, March, with my daughter, Funky, and her vascular anomaly. I would like to know what to do for her in the future to reduce or minimize her lymphatic malformation. She's now eight. Yeah, could you send me, if you could go ahead and send me photos, you can email me. Uh, it is my birthmark.org backslash Wayner, W-A-N-E-R, and we post it right here in our stream of questions. You'll see his. So if you email me and show me a photo or send me any consult, if you want a prolonged consult, then send an email to birthmarks.org and then I'll... Backslash, backslash yeah. Wayner. And then right. I'll, or I'll get or to me. Yeah. Or, or Dr. Yeah. Linda. Linda. Yeah. yeah. Hi, yeah. Stephanie. Stephanie Henley's on. Anna Fox, after having successful treatment for her hemangioma with Dr. Wayner in Berlin, my eight-year-old daughter looks good but still needs lip and nose surgery. How safe is it to carry on treatment with different a different team? We are in UK and cannot travel to Berlin. She has not done any procedures for five years. Yeah, no, absolutely. If the team in the UK know and are experienced and they know what they're doing, then there's absolutely no problem. We're not the only people in the world who do this. Well, there aren't it, there aren't many, no. and you are the best. No, so not at all. <laughs> yes, no. you are. Um, hi, Chris from Malta. It's good to see you. Uh, Kiana, quality of life. I love how that sounds every time Dr. Weiner says it. That is it, exactly. And happy birthday. She's just celebrating a birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Yep. Kiana. So Laura um, Jaro Sizemore, Dr. Weiner, you're amazing. 18 years. We are on maintenance part. Can't wait for our next trip. So she's a current patient. Yes. Um, and then uh, Shireen says, you had mentioned bleomycin has great success for lymphatic malformations. What's your experience with for venous malformations. Okay, so we do use bleomycin for venous malformations. Uh, we've had some success. We definitely do have success. One of the problems is that when we inject the venous malformation into the malformation, it flushes through. So um, Dr. Berenstein and various people have been working with certain substances that they mix it with, and that seems to have better effect. But there's no question that bleomycin is effective for venous malformations. The original people who started using bleomycin, I think, were uh, was a group in South Africa, and uh, a lot of their original work was with uh, venous malformations. So it is effective. 
Okay, Danielle has a long, que long question, but it's important. Her son is three, has lymphatic malformation of the right cheek in orbit. Dr. Levitin removed 90% of it from his cheek. There is still more in his eye and behind the cheekbone. He has had multiple sclerotherapy treatments in the orbit and cheek prior to Dr. Levitin. When, when he gets a fever or cold, they swell, and then they do steroids and antibiotics, which helps. Her question is, is there anything else that we can do? The malformation in the orbit is in the corner of his eye. Can this be removed? He has definitely had a drastic and wonderful change from the surgery. I'm just worried um, okay, so the about answer, him getting older. Yeah, so the answer is uh, yes, it can be removed from the corner or even from the orbit. Um, I've worked with Aaron Fay, Dr. Fay, and we've done pretty extensive surgeries. Dr. Fay has done extensive surgeries himself, and we have worked with lymphatic malformations in the orbit. For the most part, we do sclerotherapy with bleomycin. Now, what's changed is that we can target, or uh, certainly the lymphatic malformation can be targeted using a fused MRI and CT image. So in other words, there's technology to get the bleomycin directly into the various lymphatic malformation cysts, even if it's microcystic. And so this has been very successful. Dr. Berenstein and Dr. Fay have been instrumental in developing this technique, and it's very, very, very successful. So it's very unusual for us to operate on lymphatic malformations, but we do operate on recurrent lesions. Bleomycin has been very successful. Um, so Patricia, she's um, got her first laser coming up with Dr. Garden, and he's great, Jerry yeah, Garden absolutely. in Chicago. We say hello to him. Yeah, he's, and, from, and from me too. I just referred a couple of babies to him that he was yeah. able to squeeze in his busy schedule. Um, she wants to know about pain and recovery, and I guess that, again, dresses um, whether they use topical, nerve block, sure. no anesthesia, sure. right? So the concept of pain and laser treatments is controversial. I believe that it is painful, and uh, I have a hard time treating children without anesthesia. Adults can be treated with anesthesia, without anesthesia, but uh, there's no question that laser treatment is painful. However, you can diminish the pain by applying topical appliques, topical local anesthetic, or alternatively, you can diminish the pain with uh, nerve blocks. I prefer to diminish the plane with uh, anesthetic. Um, and Allie just is saying hello, Kessner, and this is a great case. I love seeing her daughter's progress. That was where the inappropriate laser was used on the lip, and her lip exploded. And you've done a couple debulkings. Remember, it was the upper oh, yeah. lip hemangioma from, from, and from, from Buffalo. Buffalo. And yeah. she, the baby looks awesome. I'm following her yeah. all the time on yeah. uh, Facebook. So she's just very thankful to us and. It's a good story about why VBF does what they do, do and why we refer people to the people we refer them to because we know the experts. Um, well, we've been in this business a long time. Yep. If you look at the two of us, we're getting so <laughs> bloody old. <It's laughs> yep, we've known each other for 24 years. Um, so Chris, oh yeah, his daughter's had the treatments and she's had great clearance. Lately, a small red circle has appeared on her cheek smaller than this. Um, and I've been talking to his wife about this, like about rosacea, someone said it might be, and that can sometimes sure. come with any kind of vascular birthmark. So I'm not convinced, but he's saying if it is port wine, should she go on maintenance now? Probably, but one of the things we see with port wine stains is uh, a lot of these babies get eczema, and a lot of adults get eczema, mm -hmm. and the eczema can here as a, as a fairly rough reddish area. And this, uh, if they have eczema, this makes treatment very, very difficult. So the eczema must be treated. And the best way to treat it is with a topical steroid for a short period of time. Uh, so, uh, but once again, you can go on maintenance. Okay, so Erin has a great question. She's from Australia. And yes, this is available. All of our uh, Facebook Live sessions from January of 2017 
are available. This is Dr. Weiner and mine. Third one, we have them with Dr. Geronimus, Nelson, Comey. So you can go back and rewatch any of them. So her daughter has a large hemangioma on her buttock and hip area, which has started to involute. It's 10.5 by 7.5 centimeters right now. She wants to know if you would recommend any treatment. She doesn't say how old she is or let it do its own thing. Um, and then she wanted to know if this would be recorded. I guess you would talk about if it's ulcerated or yeah. I don't know. You know, it depends on the circumstances and how old a child is. I'd be very happy to to answer any questions. If you send a photograph of the lesion and give me some idea as to how old your child is and what treatments have been done, I'd be very happy to give you an opinion concerning whether I think uh, surgery would be necessary or not. And you can send those to birthmark.org backslash Wainer, W-A-N-E-R. Callie says, is it necessary to have an MRI done to check for face syndrome if the echocardiogram and ophthalmologist appointment were normal? My son is 16 months old with an, um, an artificial hemangioma on his, uh, superficial she must mean, on his lip and a deep tissue hemangioma on the outside of his cheek. So the only time that I do an MRI or suggest an MRI to exclude facey syndrome is if the hemangioma is what's called a segmental hemangioma. Segmental is a diffuse or widespread hemangioma. If it's just a focal hemangioma, in other words, it grows like a local tumor or a lump or a bump, then you don't need to get an MRI. But if it is a segmental hemangioma, then you must get an MRI. Sue so Ellen wants to know, her daughter has a congenital hemangioma attached to her carotid artery. She is two years old. When would you recommend surgery? Yeah, fairly soon. Um, you must see a head and neck surgeon. This is not a hemangioma per se. It's a glomus body tumor or one of those types of lesions. And you should see your head and neck surgeon. And we typically operate on those as soon as we diagnose them, provided the patient is well in it. Okay. Marissa says, for a port wine, is it typical for it to be redder some days than others? Yeah, very much so. Port wine stains are vascular, so they, the color of the lesion can vary from hour to hour, from day to day. It, it's determined by how, how much blood is flowing through the lesion and how oxygenated the blood is and how dilated the surface capillaries are. So patients with port wine stains who are hot uh, will experience flushing and redness uh, when they're lying down or sleeping or they're cold, the port wine stain is typically at its lightest. So this is very, very common. Um, so Audrey wants to know, her son is 10 months old. He has a venous malformation of the tongue, yeah. soft tissue, and under the tongue. Like, How would you treat that? So once again, laser treatment is very important, and laser forms the mainstay of treatment. Uh, we typically use a neodymium YAG laser, and treatment is very successful. If they're very deep areas, we will sclerose some of the deeper areas, meaning Sclerose means uh, we will inject something like bleomycin into those deeper areas, and this is very helpful. But neodymium YAG laser is the mainstay of treatment, and you get a very, very good result. Um, Lori wants to know, her daughter's 12 and was properly diagnosed at age 10 with a VM of her buttock. She said it's quite big and intramuscular. She's had two sessions of sclerotherapy at Rady Children's Hospital. She said, as she's getting older, it seems to be sticking out a lot more. Is that normal? And it sounds yeah. like she's going right into puberty. Yeah. Too. So, you know, as a, as a child ages or gets older, the vascular malformation gets larger. The existing vessels get more and more dilated. So this is not an unusual. Uh, once again, some of these are amenable to treatment surgically. Uh, if it's in the muscle, that may be very, very difficult we'd have to look at the MRI. It, a lot depends on what agents have been used to sclerose this. You know, there are certain agents that are much more successful than others. You know, once again, a consultation with somebody else and a second opinion will be very helpful. 
Um, Shelby said, can lasers be done on any type of hemangioma? She has an appointment Thursday with their doctor and she wanted to talk to him about laser as an option. Yeah, lasers can be done on hemangiomas. And as long as they're not port- too thick, right? Yeah, yeah. If it's very, very thick, then it's not going to do much. But if there's a red surface component, laser will be helpful there. Um, Blossom Hendricks says to say hello. Um, that no one would help them. They're from Texas and that you helped her son. She says, you're amazing. (laughs) Um, Ashley has a 13 year old who has a large port wine stain on her entire left arm, underneath arm, chest, buttock. She's decided now that she doesn't want to pursue laser because she's told um, she is an inspiration to others and stands out against her peers. Are there any health risks with allowing her to keep her port wine stain not at all. Life. Absolutely not. You know, the port wine stain may get darker. It, this is not that common on on uh, non-facial port wine stains, although it can happen. So if it does get darker, then uh, she can change her mind and get treatment. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with, with holding on to it. Um, so Erin says her daughter is eight months old, hasn't undertaken any treatments. She didn't provide you with this previously. She'd be more than happy to email you, so that's good. Yeah, Mary Lynn do. said her nine months old has a focal two to three millimeter uh, forehead hemangioma. Is it better to wait for it to resolve on its own, or do you recommend Timolol? Oh, I, I would use Timolol. Timolol is very helpful, especially for a small lesion. Uh, Rachel says she's 34, has a port wine that extends from her shoulder to her elbow. She's never had treatment until she joined Facebook a few months ago. I guess everybody's talking about it. She had no idea that complications from it could arise later. I do not have any noticeable skin thickening, um, only darkening with age. So I guess there is a lot of talk about the blebs and the thickening. Yeah, um, those, so the, the, she's 34. Yeah, so the blebs and the thickening don't typically occur anywhere else but on the head and neck region. You can occasionally get cobblestones or blebs on a limb lesion, but that's very unusual. So, you know. Well, she also talks about um, not justifying the cost, but with the limb lesions, we're usually pretty good with insurance because we can say it's a potential for Pupiltronane syndrome, right? So that you can justify the laser treatment if she wanted to try it. No? Yeah, I, well. You know, Klippeltrenone syndrome is a specific entity, so, um, but, you know, you'd have to have it evaluated and let somebody make an evaluation and a determination. Yeah, I mean, you can also come to our conference in October. Dr. Geronimus is doing free laser treatments on anyone who qualifies, and you could always see, even if you got a test spot done, to see how it would look. So, and yeah. and those spots are going to fill up fast. So, anyone interested in coming to the conference for free, free clinic appointments with Dr. Wayner, Dr. Geronimus, Dr. Rosen, and free laser, you know, sign up. We're also doing free dental exams this year. Heather says, um, if a port wine stain is inside the ear, how often should I have my daughter see an ENT or is it even necessary? She was seen at birth with no concerns, but she's 2.5. And it yeah. hasn't been seen since. Okay, so from time to time, I just randomly will see a child with a port wine stain in the ear. This typically does not pose any threat, provided that the port wine stain is not thickening and blocking the ear canal. And that's not going to happen for some time. So you don't really need to see your ear, nose, and throat that often. I would see him, say, once every three or four years. Uh, around puberty, it's worthwhile having him take a look, and uh, he should, he or she should be able to tell if the port wine stain is thickening. If it is, then something will need to be done. Um, Christy's from Arkansas, and she said, "Thank you, Christy Freiberg, Freiberg Howes McGrady. You treated her daughter Paige with a PWB port wine birthmark at Arkansas Children's when she was a baby." She's heading back for annual maintenance now. It is extensive, but light. She's wondering what your thoughts are on topical serolimus. We will never forget how wonderful you treated us when we began this journey. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks for remembering. You know, uh, serolimus, I think, is successful in some patients, 
I know that there's not a lot of data, but we do use it on resistant port wine stains. And in some patients, we do see success. So it's worth, worth considering. Um, so Marissa has a question about the genetics. And I did just post an article written by Dr. Ann Comey on finding the gene for port wine stain. So she says, do you believe that they are genetic? Her mom has a cousin that has an identical port wine as her daughter. Okay, um, yeah, not a lot is known. You know, I'm pretty sure there is some genetic tendency in some families, but the, the correct answer is that port wine stains are not inherited disorders. But um, I'm pretty sure that having said that, there will be some families in which there is some degree of inheritance. And probably just like a statistical probability, right? Like a Correct. Yeah. 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 Hi, Angela, one of my former students. Um, so then Shelby said her daughter's hemangioma is on her head, her hair is growing through it. Would surgery or laser cause a bald spot, or is it possible that her hair would grow back? Um, you know, surgery can cause a bald spot if there's widening of the scar or if a lot of electrocautery is used. Laser treatment can also cause a bald spot. So if the hair is growing through it and it's flat, you know, is it necessary to treat it? Is it a visible birthmark? If it's not that visible, then leave it alone. If it's covered by hair, leave it alone. If it's not adequately covered, then you should consider something else. There's a way of doing surgery to preserve hair. And, uh, you know, but every now and again, we do come across somebody who's lost hair from surgery. Okay, so All Beats is right, and she said, he or she said they missed out on a few minutes. Not sure if you answered this for six month old, but large lymphatic malformation under tongue and floor of mouth. Would the super glue method be an option? She had three doxyscleral treatments so far with very small results. Uh, yeah, I don't, we typically don't use glue for lymphatic malformations. Um, I don't believe that uh, super glue or the scientific name for it is, is good. It, that's usually used to block vessels in an arteriovenous malformation. So. I wouldn't be happy to use that. Um, you know, there's serolimus, there are various other techniques, there's even surgery, so try and consider some of these other techniques. Um, so Audrey says her 10-month-old son has a venous malformation, 80% of his tongue and tissue under his tongue, and 75% of his lower lip along the cheek from ear to chin. He had sclerotherapy with sotritacol mixed with foam, you talked about Leo earlier, and I'm wondering if one more, if one is more effective than the other. There has also not been any talk of lasers. Okay, so lasers are effective for you're talking about venous malformations. Yes, venous. Yeah, so lasers, neodymium YAG laser is very effective, especially if it's a surface lesion. Um, uh, bleomycin is, in my opinion, more effective than sotradecol or any of the other lesions, but uh, it depends on the experience of the interventional radiologist. Some have had more experience with one over another, and there's no hard and fast rule as to what the best agent is, but laser is definitely an option, and so is uh, sclerotherapy. Uh, Melanie wants to know what the best treatment is for large blebs on a port wine stain. Uh, if the bleb is large, then you have to excise it. If it's not large, then if it's a very small, flat one, you laser. Melanie wants to know if there's any in Pittsburgh getting an opinion from. Um, I'm sure there are. I don't know anyone in Pittsburgh. doesn't mean that there isn't somebody there worthwhile. It just means that I don't know somebody. But, um, you know, if you have you, a good yeah, you, physician, speak to Linda. Yeah, She'll you can check our know. website. Um, I know there's a couple of families that have had really good results with some, you know, minor hemangiomas and port wine stain laserings in, um, in the Philly, Pittsburgh area. Um, so Carrie says, does everyone with an offset mixed deep nasal hemangioma need surgery eventually? 
Um, our plan is for Hinangio for a year, she's four months old. Is there any point in time I should stop the drug if there are no results? She's how old? Four months? Yeah, so and she has a, a mixed nasal tip, deep, deep. Hemangioma. Okay, so if the hemangioma has distended the nasal tip and the nasal tip is broad and widened, then it's very likely that surgery will be necessary. So at what stage should you stop? Uh, hemangiol or propranolol or whatever, I would stop when the hemangioma stops growing. So if this is a focal hemangioma, this should happen around 10 months, 11 months of age. And if you continue treatment till that time, then uh, you will get beyond the growth phase. Now, if at the end of treatment, there still is something left then no amount of involution will normalize the nasal tip. That's because the hemangioma grows between the cartilages that forms the nasal tip. And as it expands, it dilates or widens the cartilages, pushes them apart, and this causes uh, a disfigurement. So in most of these patients, surgery will be necessary. And surgery should be done early. You want to avoid scarring. I typically will not wait beyond 18 months to do surgery. I prefer to do it sooner. Um, because I've got a lot of questions on nasal tip hemangiomas, would you, if you're saying you would do them sooner, especially the ones that don't seem to be responding to the beta blocker, mm -hmm. would you operate while they're still in the growth phase? Or? Uh, I prefer not to because okay. You know, you're going to leave some hemangioma behind and then it'll grow back. And that makes means a second operation. And especially on the nose, you definitely don't want to do too many operations. So we'll wait until 10, 11, 12 months of age. And that seems to be an optimal time. Or 18 months, whatever. Melissa has a great question. Melissa Patterson, her daughter has a port wine extensive in the buttocks and her genitalia area. She wants to know if that can damage her future reproductive. No, not, not at all. Absolutely but That's a not. good question to ask. Yeah. Shireen said, how many treatments of gliomyosin would you typically use? Her daughter was recommended to have five treatments this and will, re uh, I, I forgot which type of anomaly she said. It's We have so many questions coming okay. through, Shireen. So in terms so, of gliomyosin, no. this is very important. Someone needs to keep a record on how much bleomycin the patient has had. We typically keep a record and we share that record with our patients. We, at some stage, will give them a record telling them exactly how much bleomycin they've had. But it's very important because there is a lifetime limit. There's a limit on the amount of bleomycin somebody can get beyond that limit You need to keep an eye on it. Now we, to know. we typically don't even get close to the limit, but I think that uh, it is important to keep an eye on it because you may get many treatments when you're young, and then when you're older, you may need more treatments, and uh, this becomes a problem if you don't know how much you've gotten. So very, very important. Five treatments is probably nowhere near the limit. Um, but I would still find out how many how many milligrams or units your child has had. Okay, Tiffy from Australia said her doctor, her laser doctor, did their seventh treatment on her eight month old. That's a port wine stain in the V two area, mm -hmm. um, and he's getting a new laser that he wanted to try on her. I forgot to ask. It's probably the Primo, wouldn't it be? If you have known if there are any new types of lasers. I know Dr. Nelson and Dr. Geronimus are using it now. Yeah, yeah. But. You know, there's no data out. I haven't used it yet. Uh, I'm going to be looking and evaluating it, but there really is no data out, so we've got to wait for data to okay. see. Yeah, Shireen's question on the BLEO, that was for a venous malformation. Okay, so, so yeah. for venous malformations, yeah, BLEO is very effective, but once again, Make sure you know how much bleomycin has been used in total. 
because there is a limit. You can't just continue using bleomycin. Okay, well, we have 15 minutes left, but we're going to continue. Allbeat says, do all patients with lymphatic malformation, venous malformation, eventually need bleo? Would serolimus prevent it? Okay, so they different treatments. Serolimus or serolimus is an oral medication. It is an immunosuppressive drug, and I don't believe that anyone should be on an immunosuppressive drug for the rest of their lives especially not a young child uh, taking it for life because it does increase the risk of certain types of cancer like skin cancers for instance and I know that's a big deal in Australia so um, but serolimus and uh, bleomycin are different serolimus is taken by mouth will that prevent you from needing bleomycin depends on the response to serolimus we usually find that serolimus is a temporary measure. We never keep a patient on serolimus indefinitely for a long period of time. So we will use it as a directed treatment to try and accomplish something and then go on to some other modality or some other form of treatment. So the answer is no, it will not necessarily prevent a patient from needing bleomycin. Okay. Um, there was a question before that went by really quick. Kathy from Florida wanted to know um, what is the best way to treat a port wine stain around the eye? Oh, laser treatment without a doubt, but you need a corneal shield to protect your eye. So, but laser treatment is the best. Um, so Amanda says she was born with KTWS in her left leg. She's 38 and wants to know any input on pain management. Um, yeah, it can, you know, it depends on the cause of pain. If the cause is intramuscular involvement, then getting the muscular uh, components treated uh, is very important. The interventional radiologist is the go-to person for that. Dr. Rosen has a lot of experience in, in alleviating pain. If the pain is from inflammation, then Sometimes removal of some of the KTS is, is important. It depends on the, the source of the pain. I just want to add while we're waiting for the next question that Dr. Weiner does go to Berlin like every other month. Yeah, I would every say two he, months, every two yeah. months. So yeah. he is in Berlin and can see any patients there um, along with his Institute, the Vascular Birthmark Institute in New York. And soon we're hoping that he will be in California um, to do some procedures. We're working on that right now. So stay tuned for that announcement when we're ready. <laughs> um, so um, Ryan says, is it okay to place a topical antibiotic on a hemangioma on the head that is starting to ulcerate currently on Timolol twice a day? Yeah, I mean, it's okay. I don't think the antibiotic is going to stop the ulceration, unfortunately. The ulceration will continue. And if there is ulceration, you should speak to your physician about maybe starting propranolol or something else to try and slow uh, ulceration down. So uh, the antibiotic is not gonna do anything to stop the ulceration. It's not gonna harm it. Well, what would you, what do you, um, I mean, I know Dr. Darrell uses meta honey. Yeah, so I would, um, I would definitely, uh, I may consider steroids you know, there are various other agents. Steroids are still quite effective in treating ulceration. Uh, propranolol sometimes works, but I would go beyond timolol. Timolol is just a topical agent. And once it ulcerates, the amount of absorption will increase significantly. So you might as well be on oral medication. So if it's ulcerating, go back to your treating physician and ask about any other treatment. So Allbeats once more has one more question. What is the youngest, smallest weight Leo can be ejected? Injected, I guess, for a person? Yeah, I mean, I've injected bleomycin in three-month-olds, six-month-olds, uh, so I'd say three to six months of age. In terms of weight, I've not looked specifically at weight, but um, three to six months of age is fine. Obviously, if the child is a prem 
preemie, then you have to adjust. Um, Mary Lynn has a question about how long would it take to, for Timolol to work on a hemangioma if the patient is using it twice a day versus three times a day? Is there a yeah, difference? that's a good question. Um, you know, we have empirically used it twice a day. Now, Timolol is fairly fast acting and uh, it's out of your system very quickly. And I've often wondered if three times a day is better than twice a day. I'm not sure. I don't have any information. And I don't know why we're only using it twice a day. But will three times a day work better? Probably because you're exposing it to more of the drug. And as provided you're not using a large volume, provided you're using one or two drops, then it should be safe. Um, and on that note, um, what about um, the moms that write to me all the time, you know, their babies are really fussing and they skip it because the baby just needs to sleep or it's fine. is that okay if yeah. they miss one? And yeah, absolutely. If it's affecting their sleep, would you then recommend they don't give it before bed? Yeah. Um, you know, it's affecting the sleep because the drug crosses the blood brain barrier and you're referring to hemangiol or propranolol. Right. Yeah, so because the drug does cross the blood-brain barrier, that's why it's affecting sleep. So um, for those cases, you either avoid the nighttime dose and give it a little earlier, or alternatively, you can switch to nadolol. Nadolol is also a beta blocker, but it does not, or it crosses the blood-brain barrier much less. And in patients who are having sleep disturbances, from the propranolol, uh, I would just as soon switch to natalol. We use a lot of natalol in our practice. Um, what do you think, and this is my question that a lot of parents ask me, that when their hemangioma is not responding, do you think that it's not a proper dose, or do you think that there are a certain group of hemangiomas yeah. that will just not respond? Well, clearly a percentage of hemangiomas will not respond. First of all, you've got to be sure that it is an infantile hemangioma because sometimes we see other congenital hemangiomas and those don't typically respond. So number one, be sure of the diagnosis. Number two, there are hemangiomas that don't respond or respond poorly to propranolol. So, you know, these are some of the issues that we see. Okay, so... Um... Looks like we're caught up and while we're waiting for the, our last few questions, we have eight minutes left. Once again, Dr. Weiner will be seeing patients at our conference on October 6th. We'll be lecturing. We have seven clinic teams and you can be seen by multiple doctors, uh, free laser, free dental exams, orthodontic, and that's for individuals with vascular birthmarks in their oral cavity. Um, for the dental exams, and the laser is um, based on Dr. Geronimus' staff qualifying. We also have 50 free hotel rooms for the first 50 people outside of the New York metropolitan area um, that register. Uh, Ryan wants to know if you know a great doctor in Phoenix, Arizona area. No, I don't. Uh, we don't and have once, anybody. Yeah, once again, it doesn't mean there isn't one. It just means that I don't know somebody in Phoenix. So we, we, we send people from Phoenix a lot to see Dr. Nelson at UC Irvine Medical Center. You know, he's pretty good, and I don't know if that's an option for her. Yeah, and Kathy is asking for an Arizona doc as well. And I would love to add some Arizona docs to my website because I get a lot of inquiries, and... Unfortunately, I'm not aware of any, so if any of you find out about an expert, let me know. Um, Actually, um, New Mexico. There is a group in New Mexico. I don't know how far that is and whether that's relevant, but at the University Medical Center, there is Dr. Tara Brennan, and the group that she works with is excellent. Very, very, very good group people. They have laser treatments and they do everything. So Dr. Tara Brennan, University of New Mexico Medical Center. Um, somebody asked about a doctor in um, Montana and I'm, 
I think MN is Montana or Minnesota. Yeah. Um, but Montana. the VBF website at birthmark.org has a button at the top called Find a Doctor. And we have um, the list of as many as we know about. And we're always willing to add if anybody has someone they feel should be added that's, um, you know, has a lot of experience with treating these lesions and successful experience. Nicole says her son has a deep nasal tip hemangioma. He's seven weeks old and on propranolol three times a day. He started at five weeks. Is there anything else that we should be doing? When do you suggest laser? Okay, so we'll only laser if there's a red component. If there's no red component, then laser doesn't work or has no role. If this is a deep hemangioma, I'm assuming that there's no red component. So once again, if it's red, you can laser it. And at what stage? At any stage, really. And this is determined by the doctor. We actually, Dr. Geronimus and I published a paper which showed that lasers together with other treatments were effective in treating hemangiomas. So this is it. But once again, propranolol is a very, very important treatment because if you treat early with propranolol and you stop the hemangioma from growing, you can prevent or obviate the need for surgery. Um, so Ryan, um, she wants, and then I know Corinne is on, so maybe she could type it in the comment if you could say the name of the doctor in New Mexico again. Tara Brennan, B-R-E-N-A-N. Tara, T-A-R. Is she a dermatologist? Or no, she's, she's a facial plastic Facial plastics, yeah. okay. She's and then in Minnesota, um, in Minnesota, we have a, a group on our website at birthmark.org. I'm not sure if you know, but we do. Um, so Jody is a 50-year-old female looking for a doctor around Madison, Wisconsin. I'm not sure what she yes. has, but we have Dr. Linda Rabinowitz, yes. who treats port wine stains in that area. And there's also, um, um, not in, uh, this is in Milwaukee, yeah. Milwaukee. No, in Milwaukee, there's a group at Children's Hospital that are excellent. Yeah, and we have them all on our website at birthmark.org. Just click on that button, findadoctor.com. Um, and Kath oh, thank you, Kiana. Kiana added the link for our Find the Doctor. Thank you very much. Um, in Minnesota, we see Dr. Flanagan. Um, I'd be happy to see some information about him. On, you know, I'm going to be attending the International Society for the Study of Vascular Anomalies meeting, and that's where the experts of the world go. Those are the people we like to have on our website. Um, misdiagnosis and inappropriate treatment prevails 25 to 50%. So we're really picky. We want to make sure we have experts. It's very important to us to make sure you get the best. Um, Nicole said, thank you. What was the name of the other drug you recommended when the child suffers from sleep disturbance? And he said that Nadolol. Nadolol. N-A-D-O-L-O-L. It's the same as propranolol. It's a beta blocker. It works the same. It's been shown to be as effective, but it crosses the blood-brain barrier less. And so if you're worried about long-term effects, you know, we know that uh, propranolol causes short-term memory loss in adults, and some parents are worried about long-term effects, quite rightly so, so am I. And uh, under these circumstances, it's good to use nadolol. And especially if the child has sleep disturbances, then nadolol would be an alternative. It does not detract from the efficacy of the beta blocker. It's still as effective. So Geethanjali is looking for someone in the Bay Area of California, and I think that's around San Francisco. San Francisco. So oh, yeah, there's a P huge, yeah, yeah, yeah Dr. UC Lona Friedman yeah, at the at UCSF. UCSF. Yeah, and there are, that's on our website. And also, in, also at at Stanford, there's a good yes, group. Yes, yeah. we have both of them. Um, Stacy says uh, her 2.5-old has a hemangioma on her head. It has flattened and has significantly faded without treatment, yet I'm still noticing there's a bit of hair not growing. It's very little. Is that normal? Will she have to worry about a bald spot? Yeah, the answer is yes. It does sometimes happen. How old is she again? Uh, she is 2.5. Yeah, so if by two and a half years of age, hair is not grown, it's not likely to. So the answer is 
yeah, there probably will be a bald spot, but this can be treated. You can either excise the bald spot or you can wait till the hemangioma is completely involuted and then do some hair transplantation. But I would say just excising the bald spot. And what you do then is you excise the area that has no hair and you bring hair bearing skin into that area and close the wound up and the problem is solved. All right, well, we've got less than a half a minute and I just want to say hi to Jim Murphy who's watching and Carrie had a good question about um, when there is regrowth after propranolol meds are used for a deep nasal tip, should she seek another opinion because it's starting to grow again? No, then if there's regrowth, then you've got to go, depending on the age of the patient, you've got to go back on the medication and then wait another six, eight weeks and then try and come off. You keep doing this. In other words, you keep playing cat and mouse with the hemangioma until it stops rebounding. Um, Carrie, his husband is stationed in Oahu, so they probably have TRICARE. Mm -hmm. I don't know of anyone in Hawaii, but those patients tend to go see Dr. Uh, Nelson in um, California. So mm -hmm. you can message me about that, Carrie. You can get a free opinion from him at birthmark.org uh, backslash Nelson. A couple quick questions. Is there a genetic trait that makes a child more prone to develop a hemangioma? Nothing that we know of. Okay, she just said it could be proteins in the placenta. I mean, it, and the placenta yeah, theories have yeah, been yeah. associated. So um, Nicole, her daughter's hemangioma covered most of her arm and hand. She's now four and the skin is mostly done. However, the length of her hand and arm are longer. I would question that's the an, diagnosis. Yeah, that's yeah. unusual with hemangioma, very unusual. So are, are you sure you're dealing with a hemangioma and not KTS or something? Yeah, she'll have to get that checked. Yeah. Um, the doctor is uh, Dr. Frieden, but go to birthmark.org. Up at the top, find a doctor, and you'll be able to see all the doctors that we have listed. Um, and I'm sorry we can't take any more of these, but Dr. Weiner and I will be happy to answer your questions. Just email us, and thank you all. And you can review this at any time. Take care. Bye. Bye.